If completed, the Brightline West high-speed rail route from Southern California to Las Vegas, Nevada will be the most extreme in the world. This 218-mile route crosses four mountain passes featuring the greatest inclines of any high-speed rail route. It will cross the San Andreas Earthquake Fault in an area where it will face up to 100 mile per hour winds. It will experience temperature extremes from 0 to 125 degrees Fahrenheit. It will face snow and dangerous baking heat. It will face many extremes. Hey, it's your old pal Lucid Stu again, and in this video we'll look at the extreme of desert flooding. We'll start off in the high desert city of Victorville, population 140,000, where Interstate 15 crosses the Mojave River. The vast majority of this high-speed rail route will sit in the Interstate 15 median, including at this location. The Mojave River is a main source of flooding extremes there in the desert, although not the only one. The Mojave is a 120 mile long river that originates in the San Bernardino Mountains just south of the city of Hesperia. It technically ends at Soda Dry Lake just south of Baker, California, although occasionally water from the Mojave reaches Silver Dry Lake to the north of Baker through a channel that runs through the town and under Interstate 15. The Mojave experiences major flooding about every 15 years, but these floods have largely been quelled by the construction of the Mojave Forks Dam in 1974 at the river's headwaters south of Hesperia. Let's look at some flood maps at the places where Brightline West will interact with this river starting at Interstate 15 in Victorville. The blue shading here is a 100-year flood and orange is a 500-year flood event. Both should pass under Interstate 15 in Victorville without incident. I ran across this old leaflet published by San Bernardino County in 1969 and it states that a 100 year flood should pass under Interstate 15 15 feet below the bridge structure. While there may be some flooding of the city around Interstate 15 in a larger flood, any major damage to a high speed rail line in the Interstate 15 median is unlikely since it will be elevated above the roadway. From there, the Mojave heads off to the north while Interstate 15 heads to the northeast, but they'll meet up again. That happens in Barstow, California, about 30 miles northeast of Victorville after the river curves in from the west. Here, Interstate 15 crosses the normally dry 1,000-foot-wide river channel. At this crossing, even the largest floods will be contained to the existing river channel, so there is no issue here and Brightline West Barstow Viaduct will cross the river at a greater elevation than the freeway anyway as it needs to fly over nearby Main Street and BNSF's Southern Transcon about 60 feet up. Ten miles east of there in Yermo, California is a more potent threat. The Yermo Flood Channel is located under Interstate 15 between Calico Road and Yermo Road. As seen in the flood maps, the interstate does have some chance of inundation, especially in a 500-year flood. While Brightline West will be elevated slightly above the freeway in most places, it also needs to get under the Calico Road overpass, and that area is at risk. Given that we're talking about a 500-year flood, this is unlikely to happen during the service life of the line, which is assumed at around 100 years, but it's possible. There are lots of places small dry creek beds cross the freeway where a freak storm could cause havoc, but none of those are listed on the flood maps. The next noted problem is near Baker, California, which is 50 miles northeast of Yermo. Baker is the lowest point on the entire line. You may have thought that would have been closer to the coast at Rancho Cucamonga, but Baker is at flood risk because it's between Soda and Silver Dry Lakes, about 75 miles south of the lowest point in North America in Death Valley. Here we're looking at Soda Lake while driving into Baker on Interstate 15 from the south, and you can see there is surface water there, but not much. A storm had just passed, but rain wasn't very heavy in the San Bernardino Mountains, which would have gotten the Mojave going a little more. This is a sizable lake bed at about 30 square miles, so it would take a lot of water to flood it to any real depth, but the Mojave River is capable of that. Here's Silver Lake on the other side with quite a bit more water in it on November 18th. 
This is unusual because usually Silver Lake is only wet from overflow from Soda Lake, but this time there was some very heavy local precipitation that flipped things on their head. The lake is about half inundated here with very shallow water. These effects are very short term. I drove by this the next day and it was already mostly mud, but a quick burst is all it takes to wash out tracks. That is possible here with FEMA indicating a risk of inundation in the channel between the two lake beds during a 100 year flood event that could put portions of Interstate 15 underwater. Up next is Ivanpah Lake just south of the Nevada border, 45 miles northeast of Baker. This doesn't have any specific flood map information, but I caught it flooded on November 18th. I've also filmed this dry and the difference is stunning. Lake flooding here is an uncommon event, but not rare. In the 80s, this lake flooded enough to overtop and briefly close Interstate 15. Brightline West will be slightly elevated above the interstate, which would have kept tracks dry during that event. The lake bed is sizable at about 20 square miles, and its catchment area isn't very large at one-third the size of the Mojave's, so it would be difficult for the lake level to get much higher, but extremes are the way of the desert. Along those same lines on the other side of the Nevada border just north of the town of Prim, Roach Dry Lake holds flooding potential in the FEMA maps. However, that flooding potential isn't where Brightline West tracks would be located directly on Interstate 15's east side. That doesn't mean the flooding threat is removed. In 2023, a storm blew through there that inundated the southbound lanes of Interstate 15 in this area. From this picture, it looks like a torrent came down from the nearby mountains and didn't have anywhere to go once it hit the freeway, with its regularly spaced culverts unable to handle the volume of water. Like Ivanpah Lake, we're talking inches of water on the roadway, not feet, so Brightline West would likely stay dry in such an event, but the threat is still there. Our next location is 30 miles to the northeast of Prim, just south of the Brightline West Las Vegas Station site. There is a drainage ditch running under Interstate 15 near Blue Diamond Road that has some flooding potential in a 100-year event, according to the FEMA maps. Exact plans have not been publicly revealed, but it appears that Brightline West will need to purchase a portion of the adjacent RV park there in order to traverse the area. That will likely allow them to improve on the drainage situation, removing the immediate threat to tracks in the 100-year scenario as they attempt to move under Blue Diamond Road and into the station. And then lastly, we have the Las Vegas station site itself. As you can see from this footage that I took of the site with my drone on November 18th, it can have significant amounts of water running through it in a small creek after episodes of heavy rain. They're working on drainage at the site currently, which includes a new culvert running under Las Vegas Boulevard. In renderings they've released, this creek is not present, so it is possible that they're planning to replace that creek with buried culvert. That would eliminate the current 100-year flood threat to a significant portion of the station site property on the FEMA maps. So rain, flooding, and often inadequate drainage of the desert landscape are one set of extremes that Brightline West will face in this challenging landscape. Will tracks stay high and dry or will they end up underwater at some point? Let me know what you think in the comments. Plenty more Brightline West Desert Extremes and other high-speed rail videos to come. Please check out that super thanks button below the video if you'd like to support the channel. Another way you can do that is by visiting my poster store and getting a nifty poster for yourself or someone else for the holidays. If ordering is a gift, order early. Processing and shipping on those is usually taking 7 to 10 days. But that's all for now. Until next time, I'll see you on that big beautiful freeway!